Hello guys, how's it going today? So, we're uh, in the back at it again here with Big Red's exhaust system because it's uh, getting kind of fucking irritating listening to it being so damn loud. <clears throat> and uh, it needs to be replaced. The whole thing's just, it's, I think there's supposed to be like something in there to kind of help divert it, I guess, out to whatever, but I think all that's kind of, I've been losing little bits and pieces of, which looks like fiberglass, um, I'm not really sure what the hell it is, but it looks like fiberglass, but I think it's some kind of a heat resistant fiberglass, I guess something for the exhaust, obviously, because it was coming out of, found a big piece of it laying down there, and then this morning I found a <clears throat> a piece sitting right on top of the, the I guess it would be the headers or whatever, but it's unfortunately it's gonna look like shit, but I just this is as good as it as it's going to get. And I don't really know what it's gonna sound like until I get it out on the road and drive it a little bit. Because in here in the shop it's gonna be loud no matter what, but so it's kinda hard to uh, you know, gauge the sound. It's got to be outside for that, but um, it's gonna look it's gonna look rednecked and uh, uh, ghetto. But I think it's helped a little bit. But again, it's not gonna help a hell of a lot because it just needs to be <clears throat> it just needs to be replaced. So this piece here, oh, I'll just flip the camera around. Okay, so this piece here, I put on a while ago because it was blowing exhaust out like crazy. So I put that on a while ago and it goes way back there. And of course I got, this is all coming apart too, where these two pieces connect. So I got a hose clamp on there trying to hold it into place. It's doing all right, I guess. Uh, and then today I put this piece on and then I got this other little piece put on. I had to put on an extra bit because wasn't covering it up good enough. Um, no, wait a minute. Let's see here. Uh, no, this piece I put on today. There's actually, I guess, two pieces here. Um, the piece way in the back that I showed you, as you guys seen here, that was the first piece I put on, and then I put this piece on here, which is boiling hot now. Um, the, again, it was just to try to quiet it down, but then it looked like most of it was coming out of here. So I put these two pieces on, um, and then it was blowing out of here up at the, up at the top of this pipe. <clears throat> So I tried to put a piece of metal on there, but it wasn't going to work because they have this, you know, how they got this shield on here, I guess, or whatever the hell it is. It's, uh, yeah, it's just, they, it's all one big piece. So you can't really put a hose clamp behind it to clamp it properly. So I ended up just ditching that little piece of metal I was going to put there and I just put the hose clamp on it. Um, because it's blowing out of the top. There's a little bit there coming out. And I just put the hose clamp on top of that. And then I just tightened the shit out of it. And it seems to have slowed down air. There's still some exhaust leaking out the back. And kind of just, you know. So, I mean, don't worry. It's, you're going to have to replace it. And... You can tell that the engine, everything's getting dirty. My shift linkage is dirty. That's extremely dirty because that leaks oil. Um, so, I think Big Red's just going to be due for a whole new exhaust system minus the muffler. I think the muffler will be all right. But all this is going to have to get replaced 100% of it. And he'll just have to undo my redneck bullshit. But this is, I hope I can get my... Other shields put back on now, and I am 100% out of hose clamps. So, 
I guess when it's time to go in to finally get service, which probably won't be until next year now, um, he's going to have to undo all this and then save me the hose clamps. Because these hose clamps are brand new. So I'm not going to throw them away. I got a couple here that are quite a few centuries old, but they're still seem, they seem to be working just perfectly fine. So I'm reusing them. But, uh, it's kind of just is what it is. Unfortunately, Big Red's falling apart piece by fucking piece. And all I, all I can do is just keep trying to redneck stuff up to make it last. And I don't know. Might get to the point where I might just be better just to sell it and then just take the money and put it into the Tahoe. So at least I can have one functioning vehicle, even though I would like to have a four-wheeler, but... I'm not going to get one for a couple of years, so. I don't know. It's an unfortunate thing because I'm getting sick and tired of um, putting money into this fucking thing. Now, I just got done spending more money uh, a few days ago because I bought <clears throat> the oil and an oil filter for the engine. And then I bought a new air filter and a pre-cleaner. All this in here is junk. And these and these older 850s have been known to somehow get oil up into the air box. And then your air your that air filter is destroyed. There's I shouldn't even be running it, but I don't know if I like changing oils in it right now. So It'll have to get done at some point, but not today. So, it'll probably be next month or something. It's only got to wait another couple of weeks, but... I think the oil... Let's see here. Well, yeah, I'm a little overdue. I'm at 600 miles now. So, yeah, I am 100 miles overdue for my oil change. But I don't really give a shit. It's only got a couple more weeks, really, to wait, and then... It can, it'll get its oil change and new air filter and oil filter and whatnot. But at this point, I'm just getting sick and tired of fixing it. Um, the oil filter thing, that's nothing new to hear. Um, that is, that, that's been kind of a common problem since they were new, but I don't know. But unfortunately... My redneck exhaust pipe system is just going to have to do for now. And, uh, there's just nothing more I can do. This, this is all I can do to it now, besides replace it. And it probably wouldn't be that hard to replace, but I just, I, I, I just don't know if I want it. I'm not dealing with it. So... I don't know. I don't know when this thing will get fixed. If it'll even get fixed. I don't know. I, I have my doubts about it because it's just money is an issue and I'm trying to get the Tahoe done and that's still being an issue and and money, money, money. Everything, everything takes money. So all you can do is just write next stuff and then hopefully it, you know, it buys you time and and we'll kind of quiet things down a little bit because that other that one day I was running Big Red, I think I was getting kind of irritated or something, and it just seemed like this had gotten so much louder than it really should have been. So, figured, well, it's probably getting on my nerves, but it's been kind of louder than it really should be. Of course, now once you get the shields and stuff put back on and the seat and stuff, that'll kind of, that'll kind of quiet it down a little bit more yet, too. But not by much, but um, I don't know. This is just really all. This is all I can do to it. Shouldn't have to be doing anything to it, but uh, it is an older machine and it's got a lot of miles. So when it gets replaced, I don't know. So kind of just the way it is. See, there's your, there's your fuel tank right there. 
And look at how not easy it would be to get to the uh, thing that tells you your, that senses your fuel level. So, and that's another thing too, is when you want to change the uh, alternator, you know, it's not really called an alternator, but that's what I call, it. it's in the front of the engine, but it requires you to pull the body off. And then the fuel tank, and then I think the front tires have to come off. And that's just way more work than I'm willing to do, especially on a machine like this that's just so cramped, you know. So, but what are you going to do? See how much longer I can run this piece of shit and then uh, decide if I'm going to fix it or what. I mean, for the way it is now, I'm lucky if I, if I would get four grand for it the way it is. So, four grand is four grand, but I don't know. But then it's the process of yanking all my shit back off again. And I don't want to do it unless I know somebody's actually would be serious in buying it. But as of right now, I still freaking need it, so... I don't know. It's got more problems than it's worth, so, you know, the price is, is going to go down quite a bit, so. Because I'm just getting tired of doing that all the time. I'm sick of listening to this. And I'm just sick of, you know, everything. It's, it's, it's just, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's time for a new machine, but, you know, like I keep saying, it's, it's, it's not going to happen, so... But, yeah, other than that, you'd have to replace this stupid exhaust system, which I'm not doing. It, I mean, it would probably would be a pretty easy job. You probably wouldn't even have to really remove this if you just... Because I think it's just bolted on there. And then it's bolted up here. Right there. Uh, see, that kind of all just floats pretty much. And you see, I got a bungee cord up there. That was to push, help try to pull that center back together. And uh, I think it helps a little bit. It's, it's at least helping the hose clamp out to a certain degree. But I think the hose clamp could probably just hold it all together. But I don't know. It's an unfortunate thing, so <clears throat> I think I'm just going to put it back together and uh, and call it good enough. That's really all I can do to it. That's just that's just going to have to do. I guess even if it quiets it down a little bit, I guess it's better than nothing. But I just don't want to. I don't know. But yeah. So I guess that's pretty much it, guys. I figured I'd just share that with you. Um, <laughs> yeah. More bullshit, but I don't think there's not much more I can do with this besides just replace it. And uh, who knows what that's going to cost. That's probably a $300 exhaust system right there. Because you know what? You're paying for Polaris is bullshit. And I don't really know of any aftermarket stuff for these machines and aftermarket sometimes will work and sometimes it doesn't so it's kind of kind of just gambling with it at this at that point so i don't know so i don't know but yeah to me it's uh I mean, yeah, the cheapest way to go is to fix this machine, but yet, you know what, uh, even cheap is not cheap enough, so. I'm just going to have to uh, hope that uh, it holds out. Once the ball joints go, well, that's going to be, be the end of it. Because then I won't even bother. I won't even bother fixing it then. It'll just become a fucking parts machine. 
I had rather just go find another another damn 850, the exact twin to this, but much better shape. And then just use this one for parts. You know, much there ain't gonna be much on here for parts that are salvageable. So but what are you gonna do? <laughs> so but anyways, guys, I guess I'm going to take off. I'm going to start putting the body back together and uh, maybe take it for a spin, I guess. See how she sounds. It'll probably still sound like shit. But at this point, I've there's not much more I can do. So this is what's going to be kind of concerning. This was always a fight to put back in there, but that's still probably pretty hot. And I don't want to... I almost burned my finger once already. So, for not running very much, you know, for like testing purposes, that, that, that sure gets hot. I mean, you're lucky it doesn't even run for a minute and it's already hot enough that it uh, it's, well, it's hot. So, I don't know. This is just the way these machines are, but. Oh, yeah, and another thing. So yeah, the other day I was uh, I cutting down some more trees in the trail there. I cut two more down. That's why this is on Big Red. But I think I'm pretty much done for now. Um, the last time there, or the last couple times I've started the 15, um, I haven't been getting power in the cab. So I can't run the blower and I can't run the radio and I can't run the digital tack, which I mean doesn't really work anyway, but um so I've been trying to dick around with some trying to figure out maybe if if it's wire related or not. Like I was I started with the battery terminals, you know, those wires. Cause I was tinkering with all that anyway, because I've been having trouble with my C B radio not you know, it's, it's always losing power. So, um, I think it, it, I think it was just because it was loose, the connection. But you got to do it a certain way, or it's it's not going to work. But but after I had adjusted that, get, got everything kind of to my liking, it was still acting up. So I kind of just. You know, obviously with that day, I just said to hell with it and just ran it without any power to the cab. You're still getting all your other gauges because they're on a, I think they're technically on a separate system, you know, so they, they get power no matter what. But it, then I had one the other day, you know, like the day after that, whatever, to haul more trees. Um... I was playing with the key, trying to see if maybe why, because it wasn't coming on. Like, it would come on and it would cut off. It would go on, it would cut off. And then, when it did come on, and then you tried to turn on, like, the air con or the fan or the little radio or whatever, um, then everything would cut out. So, I was like, well, there's got to be a small amount of power getting through, but, would, but not enough to run everything. So, then, I was kind of playing with the key. I think it's the key. I think it's the key ignition. I think it's taking a shit because if you turn it on, like, I don't know, sometimes it, sometimes if you do it slow, it'll work, but it's kind of weird. But if you turn it on real slow, it, it would work. So I'm thinking it's got to be the key ignition, which is bullshit because that key sh switch is only probably about four years old because we we replaced it a few years ago. Um, I think mostly just because the key was bending and I didn't like the look of it and it was, I imagine it was the original key ignition for it, but... Ah, probably not the original one. I imagine they blow out all the time, but... If that's really what's causing my problem right now... Is that damn key switch again. That's irritating. So, 
Because mind you, that does go through a lot of cycles on and off, you know, and then start in the tractor. But it does way less cranking than Big Red, and Big Red is still running this the same original key switch from when it was new. So I don't know what's what's going on there. I don't know if that key switch I got was just kind of like an older version and it just wasn't going to last anyway, or or what. It pisses me off. So I think that's my problem. I think the key switch is, is going bad in it, which is it's just going to have to stay that way because I'm not putting any money into it this year. So it's just, you know, I got to get my other things going and I don't have time for it. So, and then, uh, and then Rusty Six was saying something about the float on the little tractor that it's probably stuck or it could be full of gas and it's not going up like it should uh yeah probably there's something wrong with it my uncle said that it's probably not adjusted correctly because he doesn't really know where it's supposed to be at he says that we need to get a book on that which i don't know if it is a, such a thing for a book for that style of carburetor maybe there is but it, it probably would be in the operator's book or the repair book, you know, if you got one of those. Okay, well, there's $40 per book, you know. It's like it's more money to spend. So, I don't know. It's just, I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's obviously a carburetor issue. I don't know what else it would be. I just don't think I'm going to fuck with it this year. I think I'm just going to be done with it because I don't have the time. I don't have the money. And you know what? We're not going to really be using it that much now anyway. Yeah, I wanted to cut some hay with it, but I think it's going to be a no-go for cutting hay with it for this year. Um, just because, I don't, like I said, I don't have the time. I don't have the money for it. So it'll just have to fucking sit and the grain truck um the fuel tank was leaking on it and i haven't even started that, that thing yet this year and then uh i showed my uncle and he was thinking that maybe it was the drain plug because these i don't know older vehicles they actually have drain plugs i don't know about the newer ones but these older ones do and uh so we tightened it. He says it was actually, it was loose. I'm guessing just, you know, rattling loose from the years that I was running it. So he went to tighten it up. And when it, when he went to tighten it, it was leaking more gas. But the problem was is that it wasn't coming out of the drain plug. One, because we could, if it was, you would actually physically see it running out. You would see it even going through the through the threads and you know whatever so but we kind of looked i think it's underneath the first mount for that tank um there's a hole in it and i think that when we i guess moved the tank or something because you can actually move the tank a little bit because the one of the mounts is broken doesn't really do anything so it just kind of that part of the tank just sits there. So I'm guessing maybe it, it rubbed through or something. I don't really know. Or it could have just been bad to begin with. And maybe just finally having a couple of years worth of gas sitting in it. You know, it finally softened it up. And then it fell out. And then now it's leaking. So, so my uncle says, um, just let it drain out. I've been, I tried to catch it, but it, it comes out dirty. And you obviously can't run dirty fuel. In anything so that was a waste of gas because I had filled it up back in early early spring knowing that I was probably going to go at least start it but well, now it's I think bone dry and I never got to start it so but my uncle says that it, it, if, if we can find the leak we have to pull the fucking tank back out and then clean the tank a little bit and then if we could find where it's leaking he's, he says that he can just throw some jb weld on it and it should be fine after that as long as the whole 
the whole bottom of the tank is not completely rusted through because if it is well then you're gonna have to go find an, either another used tank or see if they make if they still make these tanks and then put a brand new tank on because that will only be our, our option so I don't know, everything's going to hell this year, and I don't have the time or the money to fix it, so fuck it. The tractor, um, like I said, I was going to buy a new carburetor for it this fall, or, well, a rebuild kit anyway. But I also wanted to buy a, buy a new manifold for it too. And uh, they're expensive as well. But, I don't know. So... So I'm just getting irritated, having to spend money, and just, you know, you, you don't really get anywhere, so. And then, uh, the hay rake, that actually needs a little bit of work done to it, too, but it ain't nothing serious as of right now. And I haven't even looked at it, haven't even greased it or nothing, because I don't know if we're going to be using it or not. I usually still grease it, I mean, grease them anyway, but I just don't have the time or... I just don't want to deal with it at the moment. So, what are you going to do? And I found this on the trail the other day when I was hauling trees. I don't know if it's supposed to be, uh, must have been part of a spring tooth or a, a harrow at one time or something. Could have been a giant nail, I guess, or something. But uh, she's been sitting on the trail for many, 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 many years. And not that's what years and years have done to it, but... How I didn't stab a tire on that, I don't know. So, but yeah. And then I have to build um, a harrow. That's what the staples are for. Because, uh, you know, that cow poo that needs to be knocked down. And the other thing that I use is pretty much thinned right out to the point where it's starting to, like, fold up on itself. Because it's, it's you know, falling apart. So, that thing's done. Which, whatever. So, but other than that, uh, I don't know when I'll get around to building that either. So, but I guess, guys, I'm going to take off. I want to get Big Red put back together and test drive them and uh, see if I've made it a little bit quieter. Probably not. So, put the body back together and... Uh, which will be a fight and a half, but you know how it is. And then, uh, yeah. So, but I figured as you guys know what else is going on and what I've been up to here. So, anyways, guys, I guess I'm going to take off. So I guess I have a good day and stuff and stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Take her easy.